In today's video, we're going to be taking an extensive look at the tropics as everything is suddenly exploding across the Atlantic. And we also have some Pacific uh, concerns for sure. We're going to be taking a look at Hurricane Hillary in a minute that looks to bring major impacts to the West overall. So, so much about the tropics today. But for those of you that are not coastal, we are going to be still working our way through the overall pattern as well as far as storminess and temperatures, so stay tuned for that as well. Before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're gonna just take a look at these tropics where we now have five potential tropical disturbances. I mean, absolutely crazy stuff here. As you can see, we have a 50% chance of development over the next seven days here across the Gulf of Mexico, 10% over the next 48 hours. Here, so that is our closest to home concern here as far as the Atlantic is concerned. 50% chance is an increase from yesterday as well. We do have this Southern Caribbean uh, concern. This one is going to be a 40% chance of development over the next 48 hours. And then a 60% chance of development over the next 7 days. Really, really uh, concerned about this one as well, especially if it takes that more northern track in this bubble. If it heads more towards the south, there will be a lesser chance of development coming from this one. So there are some big implications with the exact location that this one heads towards. We can see the smaller bubble out to the east of that one. We do have a 50% chance of development over both the next 48 hours and the next seven days here. So 50-50 shot of development there. And then we have our code red here where we have a 70% chance of formation both through the next 48 hours and the next seven days here. And now we have a new tropical wave coming off of Africa. This one has a near 0% chance over the next 48 hours, but it does have a 20% chance and might be climbing over time over the next seven days. So we need to watch this one very, very closely. Five tropical systems at once is very, very rare. Um, definitely concerned about this. And the, you know, when you start to look at five chances, you gotta think one out of five is gonna develop for sure. Um, and with that being said, will it be one that could impact land? And you know, even more relevant for our viewers, could it impact North America? So we're gonna be watching these every single day very closely, so be sure to stay tuned with us. As we take a look here at our uh, Hurricane Hillary, as you can see, this one is heading almost directly northward. Um, we are going to be seeing major impacts to Mexico and California. We can see it's going to be weakening to tropical storm status there over California. However, some of this water here, uh, I don't know exactly what this bay is called here uh, or this canal, whatever you want to call it here. But this area of water there uh, in between these two sections of Mexico I'm very bad with names sometimes, especially in like unusual places that I don't talk about very much. But the water is extremely hot in this area, and I think this is going to cause the very eastern end of this storm to bring even further impacts to areas there in eastern California and western Arizona. So we're going to be watching for those implications as well, especially the further east this storm tracks, the more that would be a potential implication to watch for. Thankfully, it's going to move over land before hitting California and will be weakened to a tropical storm status by time it's hitting California, or at least that's what's expected. And then by time it's reaching central Nevada there, we should see it be a uh, post-tropical depression or something along those lines, uh, still bringing some pretty heavy rainfall to these typically very dry areas. So still a highly unusual storm, very impactful storm. And I know a lot of storm chasers that are headed for Southern California because of the rarity of this event. Very, very bizarre situation there and again just like the tropics in the atlantic we are going to update you guys on this one daily also let's just get straight into the model guidance and look right off the bat we can see our hurricane hillary there uh right there very very intense storm let's just keep going with this towards this afternoon and we can see that it is going to be strengthening down into the mid 970s as far as this kind of pressure is concerned here with this one again heading almost directly northward we do see some very uh stormy weather out ahead of this as well it's going to go for states like california oregon nevada idaho montana wyoming utah colorado arizona and new mexico now as we take a look eastward we could see some storminess there for the southeast and also for the northeast we do have a thousand and four millibar low pressure center there over eastern canada this is overall bringing quite a bit of storminess and then also we have a 997 there 
um, over some of Canada, and this is bringing some thunderstorms along this line here. As you can see, my pen is currently buffering, so I can't really draw right now, so I'm trying to just kind of circle out some areas in general that you guys can look at and uh, pay attention with me. But overall, I mean, we do have a huge dry section across a lot of the central and eastern states here. Uh, there we go, our pen's finally working, but we can see that most areas overall in the entire United States are actually much drier here. Uh, and that is kind of that pattern that we've been expecting for a few days. As we move in towards Sunday here on the 20th, we can see that this storm is now weakened by about 20 millibars. So um, if this was an increase as opposed to a decrease, we would call this a bomb cyclone. Um, so it's doing the opposite of bombing out. It is like rapidly climbing in pressure uh, and weakening dramatically. Um, now, what this causes is a weaker storm that actually has more precipitation with it just because the precipitation can't die down as fast as that pressure can. So we see a widespread uh, precipitation field with this one. But not only that, we also see uh, just heavy, heavy, heavy precipitation in a lot of these areas. Again, Nevada, uh, California, portions of Arizona, areas that do not usually experience very heavy rain events are now seeing one as a result of Hillary there. Now, as we see for the southeast, we still have these typical thunderstorms going on here. Very interesting. As we approach Monday, the 21st here, we can see that there is still a lot of storminess taking place here across a lot of the west. Gulf of Mexico is looking very active as we see an approaching tropical system. Uh, Tuesday here would be the beginning of when we would be expecting potential development to take place here with this area of storminess. We can see this jet stream has a lot of storms around uh, just kind of riding along this so the jet stream is doing about like this and we see those storms along there So we will be watching for thunderstorms along that area for uh, Wednesday here on the 23rd We can see the European model is not very bullish on the development of this one We never really see any severe development uh, and really we see it weaken dramatically Maybe bringing some precipitation to areas in Texas and Mexico, but that's about all Very very quiet day here. We still see some isolated activity along this jet stream however uh, And that could bring some impacts at times now, Thursday here on the 24th, we see things picking up as 1,005 millibar low pressure center develops here. Over Nebraska, we see some thunderstorms as a result of this, both to the west and the north of this low. Also still along the jet for areas in the mid-Atlantic and uh, portions of the Great Lakes, we're still seeing some storms as well. By Friday afternoon on the 25th here, we see a lot of this activity has now uh, kind of moved in towards the east, and now we're seeing eastern Canada as well as a lot of the eastern states here seeing a lot of thunderstorm activity on Friday. Saturday the 26th here, we see 1,003 for the northeast, and this is bringing, again, pretty scattered about to maybe even widespread thunderstorms, depending on where you're at, for a lot of the northeast there. Overall, a quieter pattern, though. I mean, we haven't seen much widespread activity. Uh, Sunday's, again, quieter. A couple of areas of storms there in the upper Midwest, maybe along the east, but overall quieter. And then as we reach finally Monday the 28th, we do again have a couple of areas that are maybe experiencing some isolated activity, but really nothing crazy. The southeast may be the most consistent here with seeing pretty persistent precipitation and maybe another gulf threat of tropical activity there at the very end of the model run towards the beginning of September, end of August time frame. So there is a lot to watch here. Let's just take a look at the total precipitation. And no surprise here that we don't see that high of amounts, especially as you take a look at the middle portion of the country where these storms have kind of just avoided. We see severe amounts of rainfall for these desertous regions here across a lot of the Southwest, extending up towards the Northern Rockies. Um, areas in here are seeing far above average precipitation, especially for this time of year where precipitation is even more rare for California. Uh, definitely could help help out with some drought situations that are still ongoing for these areas from years and years of drier conditions. Um, we do see some heavier amounts here for the Great Lakes in through a lot of the east. So we see an area something like this where we're seeing some above average activity as well. But overall, again, just a quieter pattern, I would say. Uh, anywhere in the whites is expecting practically no precipitation. Your grays is a tenth of an inch or less. Greens are a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues are half an inch to an inch. Your yellows are an inch to two inches. Reds are 2 to 5 inches there, and then your browns are 5 to 10 inches of precipitation. And we actually see some of these browns here for California and Nevada, which is definitely uh, bizarre to say the least. 5 to 10 inches is going to be crazy for these areas, and I am not looking forward to seeing what kind of impacts this will potentially bring. Let's just take a look at these temperatures real quickly. We see cooler temps in the east overall, really quickly replaced by warmth. By the time we're reaching about the 22nd in just a few days, so that'll be Tuesday. 
So we see warmth prevailing for a lot of these central and eastern states, as we've been kind of expecting and alluding to here. We see the cold temperatures along the west indicative of a negative PNA, which usually causes this, this warmth surge in the central and eastern states. So it's all very consistent with very classic patterns. Uh, it's just unconventional how it's starting because it's mostly that tropical threat that flips everything over. Uh, we do see cooler temperatures still around, but I would say mostly neutral. So not really a clear depiction. We still see extreme warmth and heat moving into a lot of the east and central states at this point. But after this, look what happens. We see this cold kind of recycle towards the east. The warmth recycles towards the west. And all of a sudden, we're in another classic positive PNA pattern, perhaps, which is helping to surge this cold into the east again. So we see this next flip once more taking place. Let's keep going with this and we continue to see this kind of a cooler pattern in the east. It's a little bit less consistent here, as you can see later on, but this is an Insala model, so we do see somewhat of an averaging outlook here. I would say overall a positive PNA still prevailing here, but this is according to multiple mo model, basically models that are put together into a mean average here. And over time, like we're taking a look at 360 hours out right now, you're going to start to see some inconsistencies and some really uh, inaccurate things happen later on. And I really think that this is going to look a lot clearer as we move closer. So we're just going to have to really, really keep up with this every single day. So be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. Uh, be sure to also hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Also, like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.